What's up Rich Squad, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Dominic Rich and in this video I would like to share with you my prediction for the second leg of this season's Champions League semi-final fixture between Liverpool and Barcelona. Liverpool and Barcelona have met each other on nine previous occasions with Liverpool winning three, Barcelona winning three and three matches ending in draws. They first met in the 1976 UEFA Cup when Barcelona lost the first leg 0-1 to Liverpool. The second leg hosted by Liverpool ended in a 1-1 draw. They then met again in the 2001 UEFA Cup when the first leg hosted by Barcelona ended in a nil-nil draw. Liverpool went on to win the return leg at Anfield, one goal to nil. So after their first four matches, Liverpool was still unbeaten versus Barcelona. The two teams then met again the following season, this time in the UEFA Champions League and the first leg hosted by Liverpool was won by Barcelona, three goals to one. The two teams then went on to play to a nil-nil draw in the second leg at the Camp Nou. Let's fast forward to the 2007 Champions League when these two teams last met in the tournament. Barcelona lost the first leg at the Camp Nou, two goals to one. They did, however, go on to win the away leg at Anfield, one goal to nil, but lost on the away goal rule. Liverpool went on to the finals of that tournament, but lost two goals to one to AC Milan. So in the second half of their head-to-head -head history, Barcelona won that battle with two wins, one draw and a single loss. So now let's zoom into this season's Champions League where the two heavyweights are meeting each other once again in the knockout phase but this time in the semi-finals. Barcelona hosted Liverpool in the first leg and went on to win that game three goals to nil. This was courtesy of a 25th minute goal by Luis Suarez, a former Liverpool player who celebrated like a madman when he scored that goal. Then we had Messi scoring a brace in the 75th and 82nd minute to put this tie somewhat beyond Liverpool's reach. But guys, that's all in the past. Let's zero in on the second leg, which will be played on May the 7th at Anfield. With Liverpool trailing big time in this tie, Jurgen Klopp has some serious reassessing to do. He has to figure out what will be the best possible 11 to overturn this 3-0 deficit with also keeping in mind the crucial away fixture versus Newcastle United. Liverpool has a serious conundrum on their hands here and if they drop points versus Rafa Benitez's men, they risk dropping out of the Premier League title race altogether versus Man City who are currently leading the table by one point. So let's talk a bit about the starting lineup I think Jurgen Klopp should field. If I was Jurgen Klopp, I will persist with my 4-3-3 formation, bringing back Roberto Firmino in the starting 11 in place of the injured Naby Keita. I think Keita started the game well and I rate him a 3, but it's too bad he had to go off injured. Firmino came on as a late substitute and did a pretty good job almost scoring a crucial away goal, which Liverpool failed to pick up. I rate Firmino a 6 for the first leg. At left wing, I'm going to stick with Sadio Mane, who's been having the season of his lifetime. I think he played very well in the first leg without any luck, and he was well marshaled by the Barcelona defenders. I'm going to give him a 7 rating for the first leg. He will be crucial if Liverpool are to overturn this 3-0 deficit. At right wing, I'm going to also stick with the Egyptian Mohamed Salah. I think Salah had a pretty decent game in the first leg and if Liverpool are to overturn this 3-0 deficit, Salah has to come up with something spectacular. He played really well but without any luck. I'm going to give him a 7 rating as well. For the midfielders, I'm going to go in with Genie Wijnaldum who was played as a false 9 in the first leg to little to no effect. I'm going to give him a 4 rating for his performance in the first leg. He will be hoping to produce something very very special in the second leg versus Barcelona. Alongside him will be the captain Jordan Henderson who came on for the injured Naby Keita and played okay. Just okay. I'm going to give him a 5 rating for his performance in the first leg. He replaces James Milner who had a few chances but did not finish them well. I'm going to give him a 5 rating also. Behind those two will be the Brazilian Fabinho. I think Fabinho had a really, really decent game, 
but he has to be very 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 careful with his tackles i'm gonna give him a six and hopefully he can do something better in the second leg at left back, we will surely see Andy Robertson. He played really, really well at the Camp Nou. I rate him a 7 in that game. But I think he was missing Trent Alexander-Arnold, who he links up with very, very well to great effect. At right back, I'm going to suggest that Klopp go back to Trent Alexander-Arnold and put Gomez on the bench. Gomez was just okay, but I think Klopp went with a more defensive-minded approach and he should not have done so he should have just stuck to Trent Alexander Arnold who has racked up so many assists this season linking up with Andrew Robertson with the diagonal balls and this is how Liverpool has been scoring their goals this season it was very very idiotic to drop him I think Klopp got his strategy wrong there his tactics were way off in the first leg and I recommend he bring Trent Alexander Arnold back for Joe Gomez's performance in the first leg, I'm going to give him a 5 rating. Trent Alexander-Arnold will come back into the 11 at right back. But then again, I won't be surprised if Jurgen Klopp plays Joe Gomez again. For the center backs, we should see Virgil van Dijk alongside Joel Matip. I'm going to rate their performances a 6 I think conceding three goals was a bit too much. May have sealed Liverpool's fate. But I think Matip and Van Dijk, they were really, really put to the sword in the first leg. Conceding three goals is not a good feeling for defenders. So I'm very, very eager to see how Virgil van Dijk and Joel Matip deals with Messi and Suarez in the second leg. And last but not least, the keeper, Allison. I'm going to rate him a five for the first leg. I think he was not at fault for the three goals. Then again, when you look at some of his movements, they were questionable. After the ball hit the post, he was nowhere to be found. Even for the Suarez goal, he was out. Maybe he should have stayed back in the goal, protected his near post but he came out for the ball and of course the free kick he had no chance of saving that it wasn't Alice's fault at all it was just sheer genius from Lionel Messi if Jurgen Klopp needs to go to his bench there's always Jordan Shakiri, Divac Origi, James Milner and Joe Gomez all available to beef up the Liverpool 11. This Liverpool 11 needs to score goals they need to take every single opportunity that comes their way and at the same time keep a clean sheet this means they would have the arduous task of keeping both Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez quiet Liverpool really has their work cut out for them in this fixture but their brilliant home form this season remains their only silver lining for Ernesto Valverde and Barcelona, they simply need to go to Anfield and earn at least a draw or pick up an away goal and Liverpool's goose is cooked. But with last season's embarrassing loss to Roma in their second leg away fixture, Barcelona won't want to take any unnecessary risk. Barcelona will face Celta Vigo this weekend and the fact that they have already been crowned champions of La Liga, they can afford to rest the entire 11 that featured in the first leg for the game at Anfield. If I was Valverde, I would use a 4-3-3 formation for this fixture. We would see Luis Suarez up top for his homecoming at Anfield. He was great in the first leg, got underneath the skins of the Liverpool players, scored the first goal, picked up an assist for the second. I give him an 8 rating. He was really really good i like how suarez gets under the skins of the players even though i don't really like luis suarez that much but still you need that feistiness in the game and he did that he frustrated the liverpool players and he picked up his goal picked up his assist i expect him to do the same at anfield at left wing i would make a change i would take out philip coutinho who is also a former liverpool player but i don't think he played that well in the first leg i'm gonna give him a six rating i would replace him with Usman dembele who looked really really sharp for the five minutes or so he came on in extra time like guys dembele could have scored a brace it could have been 5-0 to Barcelona going into this second leg. 
fixture. At right wing is Mr. Captain Fantastico Lionel Messi, the man who scored a brace, including a brilliant free kick one for the ages. That one was a classic, man. Jaw dropping. I'm going to give Messi a perfect 10 rating for his performance in the first leg and i expect him to replicate it in the second leg every single time this man had the ball liverpool was nervous i'm telling you i was nervous for liverpool messi he is the goat i'm sold on it i'm sold on it step aside cristiano ronaldo in the middle of the field i would stick with arturo vidal to add some steel to this 11. i give him a 7 rating for his performance in the first leg i think it was very very solid alongside him will be the croatian Ivan Rakitic. He was absolutely phenomenal. Stopped the goal off the line late in the match. He was really menacing early in the game. I'm going to rate his performance an 8. And Rakitic should be back at Anfield to provide Barcelona with some very, very, very solid midfield work. Behind those two, we will have Mr. Reliable Sergio Busquets. I rate his performance an 8 as well. He was really good helping out in the defense and he pivoted very, very well for Barcelona. His work always goes unseen, but I'm going to give Sergio Busquets the well-needed recognition he deserves. Left back, Jody Alba, man. He was magnificent magnificent magnifico i'm gonna give him a nine rating for his performance in the first leg that assist for luis suarez was absolutely amazing his attacking prowess is one reason barcelona is so deadly on the counter-attack over on the opposite side i'm gonna stick with sergi roberto if valvede wants he can bring back nelson semedo late in the game like he did in the first leg but i will stick to sergi roberto who also roams forward he is capable of playing in the midfield so his skill set is very 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 good as well so look for sergi roberto on the right hand side of the defense i'm gonna rate his first leg performance a seven and let's go into the center backs let's start with Gerard Pique I'm gonna rate his first leg performance an 8 as well he has been one of Barcelona's best players this season by far the World Cup winner is definitely gonna go down as a legend could he win a treble this season with Barcelona we will have to wait and see his partner will be Clement Longley who I'm gonna give a 7 rating he is still settling in this Barcelona team he played well but I still think he has a lot to learn and last but not least the goalkeeper mark andre ter stegen who was solid as a rock in goal he stopped everything liverpool sent his way and i'm gonna rate his first leg performance a nine if valverde needs any injection of life off the bench he can always call on philip coutinho malcolm nelson semedo and company he has a wide array of players he can call on when he needs to so guys now for the sweetest part of the video where I share with you who I think is going to make it to the final. When I made my first prediction video, I predicted two draws in these fixtures. First leg to draw, the second leg to draw with Liverpool ultimately winning the tie. But guys, we all know what happened at the Camp Nou. Liverpool got baptized three goals to nil and I might change my mind. Liverpool may have to throw a kitchen sink at Barcelona and keep Messi subdued at the same time. Fixtures haven't been kind to Liverpool either. Six matches in April, that's a game every five days plus training. Then add three games in the first week of May, needing to win every single one or end a spectacular season without any silverware. This may yet be Liverpool's Fate. But miracles do happen, right? Liverpool may have to do a few things here. Play a strong 11 versus Newcastle and continue winning and hope that Man City drop points versus Leicester or Brighton. Or trust their backup brigade to offer Salah Van Dijk, Mane, Firmino and company a well-needed rest and still bag three points. Let's assume Liverpool brush aside Newcastle with a rotated 11 and face Barcelona on Tuesday fully rested and and ready could they press high score three goals and keep Messi and Suarez at bay Klopp himself knows how difficult that would be does Liverpool has 
three goals in them versus Barcelona at home without reply? Yes, they do. But will it happen? I think not. Barcelona are unbeaten in the Champions League this season and have already done the business in La Liga and can afford to change their entire 11 for the Celta Vigo game this weekend. And of course, they may not win with Prince Botang up top, Malcolm and Coutinho on the wings, a midfield of Arthur, Alenia and Ricky Pooch, with Murillo, Umtiti, Musaweg and Tobido in the back with Silicon in goal. You get the point yet Barcelona's squad is deep and they have nothing to play for they're already champions with Barcelona on course for an unprecedented treble and Messi promising to win the Champions League this Blaugrana 11 would be extremely difficult to stop at Anfield on the moon or anywhere they play the second leg. Suarez will be raring to go at Anfield and if he scores, his celebration will be more extravagant than the one in the first leg. Liverpool may even give up free kicks in messy territory and we all know what could happen. I predicted a draw in both legs with Liverpool advancing on the away goal rule. But if we learn anything from the first leg, we know Liverpool won't turn this tie around. I'm going to change my prediction. I'm allowed to do that, right? Even though I predicted Liverpool to qualify for a second straight final, I'm going to predict Barcelona to do a clean sweep and win the away leg two goals to nil at Anfield, five nil on aggregate. And even though Barcelona has not been great on the road, I think they can do it. They have won two of their away fixtures this season in England, and I think they can do a third. And I also want to use this forum to predict another trophy less season for Liverpool. They're going to come in second behind Manchester City in the English Premier League. But don't get me wrong. Liverpool could turn this tie around. It's quite possible. 3-0, take it to extra time, take it to penalties, and win the damn thing. It's possible. Liverpool has only lost once at Anfield this season versus Chelsea in the League Cup. But in the EPL and in the Champions League, they are unbeaten. If they continue that trend, but end up winning the game by three goals or more without reply we can see a miracle at Anfield like the miracle in Istanbul when they lifted the Champions League trophy but that's exactly what it's gonna take a miracle to turn this tie around I think it's gonna be a Barcelona versus Ajax final this season at the Wanda Metropolitano in Madrid Spain that's my final prediction I want to know yours in the comment section down below. It should be a bit easier this time. And if you're going to come on the video to give me slack and say, Hey, I thought you said Liverpool was going to win. Liverpool had their chances. They blew it. And now I'm not going to predict them to win anymore. Hmm. I'm allowed to do that, right? But guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you're new around here, consider hitting the subscribe button. Give the video a big, big thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next video, peace out. Rich Squad.